good afternoon and good evening. It's your girl Chuck Tay, and I am here with your RETV Sports Break. You can catch me here every Thursday, talking junk and spitting facts. So let's get started. So fresh, fresh out of Black History Month, racist moment. Who would have thunk? So the Creighton men's basketball coach, Greg McDermott, decided that he was going to rally his team with a little speech after their loss to Xavier and promptly told them, and I quote, guys, we got to stick together. We need both feet in. I need everybody to stay on the plantation. I can't have anybody leave the plantation. Well, Greg, what plantation might that be? I'm curious. I just don't understand because, of course, then he tried to backpedal. Oh, I don't talk like this. And I've never said that before in my life. So you're telling me you've never said anything regarding plantations in your life. Yet that was the first word that came to your mind. I This would have been a little bit racist, but not as bad if you just would have said field. But plantation is like a top five slavery word you know not that that's like a glorious list to to have but you can't say certain things without it immediately going back to slavery and plantation is one of those things i just don't understand i don't get it not only is it racist you fixed your mouth to say it to a team that is predominantly black your assistant coach black at this point i don't even know that i would care if they were all white what do you mean you never said this but it was the first thing that came like just flew it greg just came right out rolled right off the tongue like your own name i don't i don't understand i don't understand so of course everyone the school the athletic director even the assistant coach are, well, you know, he's apologized, but we're taking action. This is how we feel. We're sorry to the people who have uh, been upset by these comments. We do not stand by this. You know, the usual uh, dog and pony show when somebody says something racist, but he's not going to lose his job. They're saying, the school that is, that his um, punishment, if you will, is going to remain confidential to me that just means he probably got a slap on the wrist and he's not going to coach in like the next two games but it's not enough and what really bothers me about this comment is it happens too often and the repercussion is not enough it's just not enough you know it's bad enough that these things happen in private, you know, like you, you can't pay me to believe that this is the first time he has ever referenced a plantation when speaking. You just can't because it rolled off his tongue entirely to just like regular. I don't like it. You can't pay me to believe that. But what are you what are you saying to these black players and this black coach that he, when he returns like how do how I can't even get the words out because it it just baffles me. If that was my kid on that team, you'd be going to a new school so god dog on fast. Like and I know red tape scholarships, I got it. Like I really do. But this is why the discussion has been for a while, but heavy in the last probably like year or so why these black athletes need to be going to school with people that look like them they just do because clearly he couldn't he didn't even have the wherewithal or compassion to stop and think before he spoke it like you are looking in the face of black men and you say something, some sort of slavery reference, get out of here. No, mm -mm. nope, nope. I personally won't be satisfied unless he loses his job. And considering that's not going to happen unless he resigns, which I also don't think is going to happen. I'm just never going to be satisfied. And I own that. That is the hill that I will die on. But black boosters, anybody like y'all need to pull your little money out. Go do something else. Because, mm-mm.
this is not okay and it happens entirely too often like i said and the repercussions are not enough because it's clearly not making people stop and think mm, better not say that nope we're just gonna say it and then we're gonna apologize for it later because it's it's easier to uh ask for forgiveness than it is for permission or whatever the saying is so i'm just gonna say it and then i'm gonna apologize and we're just gonna sweep this under the rug and i feel like that's what's happening here and i, I don't like it so anyway that's all i got to say about that but now now let's get on to some good news so um it has been reported that during all-star weekend day <laughs> the nba is actually going to give over three million dollars to the united negro college fund and the thurgood marshall college run in support of historically black colleges and universities and i get so excited about this because as a graduate of a historically black college <clears throat> I just do not believe that they get the recognition that they deserve. I do not believe that um, they just don't get the recognition that they des that they deserve. I'm getting tongue tied because I'm just excited. I just think this is such a beautiful thing because one, it's kind of like a full circle moment, if you will. So let's think to last season last year um the nba the players the coaches protesting because of black lives matter brianna taylor um george floyd just everything that was going on you know they're they're standing up in other sports too but we're talking about the nba right now um you know they're standing up for what they believe in they stop playing games they're wearing shirts they're doing all of the things you know just using their platform uh to bring awareness to black lives matter and all of the injustices that are happening to black and brown people on a very regular basis so now we have something good and positive that they are using their platform for also for black and brown people so i just think that's a super super beautiful thing i'm doing this a lot because i'm just very passionate about about that um about historically black colleges and universities um again being a graduate of one um and just knowing the the connections uh the networking the camaraderie that comes along with attending a historically black college or and or university it just brings it does something to me right here just just right here um and again just using their platform for something good uh you know like this is gonna help who knows how many kids go to college you know it's black college white college college is college and it ain't cheap let me tell you something not cheap so i just think that that's an amazing thing that they're doing so in kind of in summation um both teams are playing for one of these uh college funds so um i don't think the report told me which one was which but we'll just say maybe uh team lebron is a united negro college fund and um team freak is uh thurgood Mar marshall college fund so they are both both teams are going to give um x amount of dollars at the beginning of the game there's going to be for everything that happens like the skills challenge um dunk contest like those types of things whatever team that player uh plays on if they win so again well, let's just say steph curry um if he wins the three-point shootout you know whatever team he's on uh it they're gonna get money for that college fund uh if he wins the three-point contest if uh you know so and so on and so forth uh so i just think that's a beautiful thing because they literally could have done anything like they didn't have to do that and i just think that that's amazing so uh kudos to the nba um always always shout out to the historically black colleges and universities and uh I, i'm just i'm just like overwhelmed with joy for that um <laughs> i know my face doesn't necessarily say it but i really am because i'm just I tell my my people, whoever will listen all the time, if I have to pay for my kids to go to college, they're going to an HBCU. It's not it's not up for debate. My money goes to HBCUs. So learn how to play chess or something if you want to go somewhere else. And last but not least, before I get out of here real quick, I just want to say, um, you know, the Suns beat the Lakers the other night uh, without Devin Booker from midway ish through the third quarter and beyond um and i just feel like we're not talking about that enough we're we're just not because if you've been here with me since the beginning my first like 
maybe episodes one through three ish uh we just talked about the Suns and Devin Booker because at that time we're in the bubble the Suns are dominating the bubble and then they got sent home which I'm still upset about but Devin Booker I just do not feel like he gets the recognition that he deserves I really don't you guys don't talk about him enough for me and I don't appreciate it I just don't so first let's talk about already averaging above his career average which is like that sounds like nothing but it is clearly not it's a thing so averaging 25 points per game this season career average is 22 we're talking about three points but still and we still have like 30 some games to play um so already averaging above trending up in the correct direction and then the Suns as a unit as a whole 31 wins since the bubble and we're not talking about it enough you know like that is a team that you have to look out for you just do and to know that they could beat the Lakers LeBron AD you know those those caliber of players without one of their stars that's a thing and we need to talk about it more so again we need to be watching the Suns. Y'all need to be talking about them more. And I am excited to see what happens. So that's it. And that's all. I am going to get out of here. You can catch me next week wrapping up what happens at All-Star Weekend Day every Thursday. Your girl Shaxay. And I'll see you later.